Hey guys, this is John, and this is a Chess Rivals match against the one and only Grandmaster Simon Williams, the Ginger GM. Welcome, welcome to everyone joining me in the Twitch chat. How's it going, guys? Solaristic, thank you for the well wishes. D. Palecki, Lovely Bean, Uday, Ryan Anonymous, Norwegian Chess Giant, Raythra, Kevin the Davis, 11 Hydroxy Metabolite. <laughs> you guys have some complicated usernames. Indolent Lad. Archeon Harsh. Monum Distant Fire. Hello to you, Distant Fire. Kevin the Davis. Eustum Terminoil. Chestosterone. Great username. Thanks everyone for showing up. As I was saying, this is a Chess Rivals match. Continuation of the Chess Rivals series. Against Grandmaster Simon Williams. It's been too long since we played. This is a dual commentary match, so Simon is streaming this as well. If you're watching this live, you can go and check his stream out, or you can use the multi-twitch feature, which just got linked by Moobot in the chat. And the format, you can see the scoreboard on the right. is not filled in yet because we haven't played any games, of course, but we're playing 15 plus 10, 5 plus 0, 3 plus 0, and then 1 plus 0. So a mix of everything here. And we're only going to be playing two games at each time control, but... Given the amount of time controls, that's a fair amount of chess overall. Eight games total. And we're starting with the 15 plus 10s. And thank you for I568ML, subscribed with Twitch Prime. And Uday, cheered one bit. Says, good luck, John. Thank you, Uday. We'll be starting any moment here. I'm just talking to Simon, getting the logistics all down. Belgian Novice, thank you for the 500 bits. And again, Uday, 139 bits. Much appreciated, guys. I did get rid of the chat. The last stream that I posted, the announcement for this dual commentary, people were complaining about the chat on the right-hand side. I can't honestly tell if people like the chat or don't like the chat displayed, so I just got rid of it and I put up a scoreboard instead. <laughs> if you have any strong feedback on it, let me know. I might do an official poll at some point. It mostly impacts when I upload this to YouTube, what people want to see. Simon just called me an angel. Well, that's very kind of him. <laughs> I'm going to tell him I'm good to go whenever he is. We're going to get rolling. How's everyone doing? It's Thursday afternoon right now. It feels almost like a Friday to me. I don't know why. Maybe because I'm a self-employed chess guy. <laughs> so the days kind of run together sometimes. Thank you, Jurgis. Appreciate the well wishes. Hey, Cool Bear. Yeah, again, even in the Twitch chat right now, people have varied opinions about the chat. Well, I think the scoreboard is good for this match because it's nice to see at a glance what's going on in the match, especially at the various time controls. But I'm going to do a poll at some point. I personally don't mind the chat when I'm watching it on YouTube, but there's a lot of people who say they get distracted by it. And I understand it's not easy to, like, cover it up if you're watching on a device or on your computer. I could understand that, so. We have 143 viewers right now. I was just taking a look at the U.S. Championship games right before I went live. Pretty big day at the U.S. Championship. And Chess Bay cheered 5,000 bits. That's a lot of bits. Thank you, Chess Bay. It says, good luck. Thank you very much. Am I prepared for 1H4? No. <laughs> I didn't do any prep on 1H4. Didn't prep, period. But we'll see what happens. How many games are we going to play at each time control? Two games. Ames, it's two games at each time control. Oh, thank you, Anton. I'm glad you like the font choice. It was the default font. I think it's Calibri on WordPad. <laughs> so there you have it. Just check my challenges. Told Simon I'm ready, so whenever he's good to go. What's going on in the U.S. Championship? This is looks like a very boring game. Wesley versus Fabiano. Uh, must be... I thought it was a Berlin, but it's actually a Petrov. That was going to be my next guess. So Fabiano, I'm sure, is completely content with the draw here with, with Black against Wesley. Fabiano's in the lead with Sam Shanklin at the moment. Um, I saw that Hikaru is actually playing his Blitz opening. His Blitz and Bullet opening, he's taking to the U.S. Championship. He lost yesterday against Viadi Zore. He's on minus one. 
So he's probably like, eh, you know, let's just have some fun. I'll play the stuff that I play against Eric Hansen and beat him to a pulp and um, virtually everyone else on chess.com. <laughs> I don't know if it'll work against Sam. He's a very strong player and he's having a great tournament. But hey, Hikaru has an unbalanced position right now. So I wonder what will happen here. We are competing with the U.S. Championship for viewers right now. I will completely understand if you want to watch the U.S. Championship coverage on YouTube rather than this, but both of those broadcasts will be archived. The Saint donated $10, says, Love these matches, John. Thanks for setting this up. My pleasure, The Saint. As I was talking about yesterday on the announcement stream, one of my goals in doing these Twitch streams is really to do a lot of collaborations. So I played a match with Grandmaster Krikor Mekatarian last Friday. I uh, got the match with Simon. I'm going to play a match with Andras Toth. That will be in mid-May. Details forthcoming on that. So I'd really like to play a bunch of the, the streamers and, and set up dual commentary matches. I think they're awesome. The one with Krikor was really good. We played four rapid games in that match. It's on YouTube if you want to check it out. I think it was very hard fought and, and quite instructive too. There were some interesting games. All right. Still waiting on Simon. Haven't heard from him. Let's check in on the U.S. Women's Championship games real quick. So I was worrying about those two. I was taking a look at this opening here. This is a key game for Nazi Pakidze playing black. She's a full point behind Annie Wang. Annie Wang has six. Six out of eight. And um, Nazi Pakidze has five. So this is almost a must-win game for Nazi. And I think she has an awesome position out of the opening. It was a very sharp variation. And uh, on the broadcast, they were talking about how it was odd that Sabina was thinking so much in this line because it is so sharp. But as you can see in the time differential, Sabina has been deep in thought, and that's not a good sign for her, of course. If it was a, a slower position, a less sharp position, maybe you can get away with being that far down on the clock this early, but this is razor sharp. Looks like Nazi knows what she's doing. This is very dangerous for Sabina Forzer. He's waiting for me to challenge him. Okay, well, I will do that then. Uh, okay. I have to remember that Simon's username is ginger underscore GM. Uh, okay. Okay, I gotta get the command right in order to play him because we're playing with an increment. The first game. Uh, Chess Bay or someone knowledgeable, do you know how I challenge with an increment using the slash play command? That's what I'm trying to do and it's saying invalid argument. I guess I could find him in my friends list and do it that way too. We'll try to do that. Yeah, that's going to be the easiest way. All right, the challenge is off. And we are good to go here. I have black in the first game. Once again, I'm heavily outrating my opponent in the rapid category. <laughs> you guys saw me lose a bunch of games to, uh, or a bunch of rating points, I should, I should say, to GM Mkhitaryan. And... That's because a lot of times grandmasters don't play rapid. And, you know, I know Simon does actually from time to time. He has a rapid series. But I think Krikor doesn't play any rapid at all. So his rating was like 1900 when we played. Mine was over 2300. And I just got slaughtered. So here we go. First game of 15 plus 10. There'll be two games. I'm playing d4, g6. After d4, d5, Simon and I have had some games where he goes for a gambit line. So just playing g6 to mix it up. And of course, what else would you expect? <laughs> Simon plays h4 on move two. So whoever said, are you prepared for one h4? You're pretty close. He played two h4. So let's see how I'm going to react to this. I think this is the idea. I think we can all agree on that. So knight f6 certainly cannot be a bad idea, right? Let's play that. Let's see if he wants to go full Monty and play h5 and sack an exchange. Thanks, Clanger93. 
All right. I mean, I can't back down from this. I'm not sure what this uh, dual commentary match will be like. Will it be educational? Will it be just two players trying to bludgeon each other? Probably mainly Simon trying to bludgeon me. <laughs> I think this remains to be seen, but if this game is setting the tone, then, um, you know, it might get a little sloppy here. Okay, e4. So he's taking the center, obviously. Thinking about playing d5 and just counteracting his, his play in the center. If he closes it with e5, I think I'm happy. I can even pivot this knight back to g7. But d5 looks like the appropriate choice here. Yeah, I'm going to play that. Uh, also, since I was talking about collaboration with other streamers, if there is someone that you'd love to see me play a match against, please let me know. I'm taking suggestions. Also, as Mubot just mentioned, you can join the John Bartholomew fan club if you like. That enables you to enter tournaments that I sometimes host on this stream. But please let me know if there's some sort of streamer you'd really like to see me play. Amon Hamilton is one guy I think people have been clamoring for in the past. I think that would be a good match. Gamma95 just subscribed. Thanks, Gamma95. Appreciate your subscription. So D5, white could take it. I suspect that's probably the most likely move. Maybe, hmm, yeah, he does take. I was thinking about actually coming back here with the knight and trying to recapture like this. It does give him a chance to play C4. I could also play queen takes D5, and then we have a Scandi-like position where I've won his H-pawn. So I think I will probably play queen takes d5, but I'm looking at this variation briefly, like knight here, c4, c6. Because Simon is not a guy who likes to give the initiative back once he sacrifices material or tries to take the initiative himself. So I wonder if he's willing to go into that. Knight f6, c4, c6, let's say takes, takes, then the d-pawn is under attack. If d5, knight e5 probably... Mm, he has nice central presence there. But if I take on d5, it honestly just looks like straight pawn to me. Knight c3, I can go back to d8 or to a5. Yeah, I'm going to take with the queen. Let's make him prove it. Does play knight c3. So a5 or d8. You know, I also can think about queen d6 as often happens in the Scandinavian. You've got those two or three queen options. Um, I have less experience with the queen d6 setups. I mean, d8 is, is definitely the safest move. Queen a5, though is enticing to keep an eye on the knight on h5 if he ever decides to sacrifice there. I think probably back to d8 is the correct move here. Maybe to d6. But I'm just trying to weigh my options when this knight is on h5 rather than the usual f6 square. Uh, that's why I'm also leaning towards d8. I think it ensures that my queen is not going to be hit in an awkward way later. Like, if I go to d6, knight e4 is in play. There's things like that. Granted, if I go to d8, he could go bombs away here. Take, take, queen takes. I take here, perhaps. It gets sharp. I'm going to go back to d8. Mr. EQ, I think that's Alexander, donated $10. Says, Simon's 2H4 is out. Good luck. Thank you. You know, always scared when you see Harry running down the board that early against the Ginger GM. Yarte Pedersen, thank you for the 500 bits. You'd like to see a match against Jerry, Chess Network, Amon, and Astana. Yeah, yeah. I would love to play all those guys. I think the matches against Amon and Astana are definitely the most realistic. 
I've talked about before. I've reached out to Jerry in the past, but he um, seemingly never does collaborations. I think he told me straight up he just doesn't collaborate with other YouTubers, streamers. But yeah, I think the match against Astana would be close. Aman. I feel like all three of us are right around the same strength. Okay, bishop c4. So I'm still a little leery of this rook takes h5 business. Therefore, I'm definitely thinking about simply pivoting the knight back. I know I've lost some time, but I have won a pawn. I'm also thinking about maybe knight c6 and attacking d4. If bishop g7, I think rook takes h5 is very likely. So, yeah, knight f6 is what I'm leaning towards here. Knight f6, knight f3, and then I can't play bishop g4 because a bishop takes f7 or knight e5. But I should have decent options like bishop f5, for instance. BGH, thanks for the 100 bits. This is a match against Mannered Monkey. The fans demand it. <laughs> also got to make sure I don't fart, uh, fall too far behind on the clock. Got to make sure I don't fart. Is that what I said? <laughs> uh, hmm. I want to accelerate my development here, but... It's not going to be simple. I mean, starting with bishop g7 doesn't look that bad, though, but I think knight f3 or even rook takes h5 come into consideration. Therefore, maybe knight c6. Hmm. Now, oftentimes in these queen d8 setups, you play a6, as you've probably seen before with my games in this line, but I don't think a6, b5 is really appropriate here. It doesn't make so much sense. Hmm. E6 is pretty radical. Usually you don't want to play E6 in these setups, but I'm considering it. And locks in the bishop. I'm just foreseeing a lot of problems if I play knight f6, knight f3, and then bishop f5. I don't like the look of knight e5 followed by g4. Knight e5, e6, g4 is very dangerous for black, if not outright losing. Long think here. I know, not great time management. Okay, I'm going to play bishop g7. We'll see if he takes on h5. I don't think he will. I think he'll actually just play knight f3 and develop and try for knight e5, some sort of business like that. I don't know why I'm doubting that Simon would, would sacrifice material, but somehow I don't think he's going to do it. Yes, I know I'm burning, burning a lot of time. That was a critical moment, though. I'm not saying I should have burned four minutes on that move, but I could easily land in trouble if I played natural moves there.
And thank you to Glock for subscribing with Twitch Prime. So if he takes on h5, I take back, and then queen takes. He's threatening on f7. I could castle or play e6, one of the two. I was thinking castles, actually, even though it looks like my king is open. Because d4 is loose. Uh, maybe the bishop can go back to d3, though. Hmm. It'll be interesting if he does that. Let's pre-move this just in case. J. Labella, 91, subscribe. Thank you. Uh, queen f3, move I wasn't suspecting at all. <laughs> okay. So I think knight f6 looks normal here. Yeah, I'm not going to hesitate on that one. Pick up the pace. Block the threat, bring my knight back. Maybe later I can play bishop g4 with tempo. He has taken away f3 from his knight, which I like. Also, knight c6 now gains in strength, because I'll be hitting this. Definitely a little surprised by the queen f3 choice. I don't think that was best for him. And now I just want to develop quick. So again, knight c6, I'm looking at. Yeah, let's do it. Bishop b5, I can play bishop d7. I am hitting d4. Also, maybe this knight will come in here. I could see that being potentially strong in conjunction with this move. John, you should get a match arranged with King's Crusher. I have played King's Crusher before. It wasn't an official dual commentary match, but I did play a match with him on Lee Chess a couple years ago. I'm most interested in playing players, you know, who it would be um, interesting from my point of view to play. No offense to King's Crusher, but he's several hundred points lower than me. So I don't think that would be a real even match. Yeah, I think I would beat Chess Network, but I don't think it would be a straightforward match. He's tough. Ben Feingold, Eric Rosen, Akshat. Yep, these are all good suggestions. I like my position now, guys. I don't mind playing this. Plays bishop f4. Mm -hmm. So, do I play bishop g4 with a gain of time? Makes a lot of sense. I think he's going to go to e3 with his queen. Bishop f4 is probably a good decision, although, you know, he is sacrificing this pawn. Can I get away with taking it? Take, take, take. I'm hitting his bishop. c7 is loose. I guess he has knight b5 there, is maybe what he'll go for. Knight b5, I take c4, he takes c7. King f8, he takes a8. I have some bishop g4 business at the end of that line. Mm, not clear who's better there. That's a direct challenge to my setup, though, is knight takes d4, a good option here. And he's certainly going to castle queenside, if given a chance here. I'm honestly pretty tempted to play knight takes d4. To try to seize back the initiative. Knight takes d4, knight takes d4, queen takes d4, knight b5. Can maybe take on b2 there as well. Take on b2. Take c7, king f8. Mm, maybe rook d1 then. It's not clear. So knight takes d4, knight takes d4, queen takes d4, knight b5, queen takes c4, knight takes c7, check, king f8, knight takes a8. I have moves like bishop g4 at that point, or knight d5. Knight d5 is interesting.
My king's a little messed up, though. Some problems fully coordinating. I like bishop g4, though, because if he takes on b7, I have mate. But maybe he just castles at that point. Oh, no, my knight can block on e8. He can't castle. Okay. Ooh, I really want to go for this, guys. I really want to do it. Let's do it. Let's see what happens. So critical line here. The trade on d4, knight b5, queen takes c4, knight takes c7, check. King over. And ugh, it's hard to say what's happening at that point. I like my activity. I know my king and my rook don't coordinate so well. It'd be much better if I could castle first. But if I castled first, he gets a chance to castle queenside. Um, maybe I was okay there, but he looks pretty strong in the center and has chances on the king side. So compensation, I would say. We're going to do this and see if he takes me up on this offer with knight b5. On knight b5, I got to take on c4. Otherwise, this happens. I don't think queen takes b2 is working so well. He could take on c7, king f8, rook d1, I was thinking. So I don't like that position. So I'm banking on this line, knight b5, queen takes c4, knight takes c7, check, king f8, knight takes a8, and now bishop g4. And I think he'll play queen d3 after that. And then I, I have some options. Oh, actually, I can just take on f4 if he does, because if queen d8, I can block with the knight on e8 at the end. That should be good for me. And I'm controlling c7 at that point. In some cases, the evaluation of this variation will depend on whether he can save his knight on a8 in the end. And admittedly, it, it, it's kind of hard for me to win that knight in some cases. So let's see what he does. I took this decision based on psychology as well, because as I was explaining earlier, Simon doesn't like to relinquish the initiative. So I feel like a counterattacking idea involving taking the initiative back. So kind of turning his strategy around on him, giving some material, but to seize the initiative back may not be his favorite adjustment to have to make. What is the best thing to do while your opponent is thinking? Generally thinking yourself. <laughs> thinking about the position yourself. Night Tour, thank you for the subscription. Hey, Chessy Bus. So that's why I'm trying to forecast how this game will go. I, I don't see too many other moves other than knight b5 I have to worry about. Because I think if he plays slow here with bishop b3, I can castle, uh, or maybe play bishop g4 even, but probably castle. And I'm happy. It's hard for him to castle queen side. I'm solid on the king side. So for better or worse, I think he has to go for this. Yeah, the more I look at that, the more I like my position. So this is good visualization practice for you guys. And I won't draw the arrows just to make it clear, or less clear, depending upon who you ask. So knight b5, queen takes c4, knight takes c7, check, king f8, knight takes a8, bishop g4, hitting the queen. Um, I think white has to move the queen. I mean, I would look at moves like b3 as well, but let's say white moves the queen. White has to move it somewhere uh, where I don't checkmate him on e2 after that. So either d3 or e3. e4 is covered by my knight and queen. If queen e3, I think knight d5 is strong. Forking the queen in the dark square bishop. Queen d3, I can take on f4. Because importantly, and it took a little while for me to see this, queen d8, I can meet with knight e8 blocking checkmate. And I should be winning there. So going back mentally to the position after bishop g4, maybe white will have to play b3 in that position. But that, that somehow looks wrong, playing b3 there. I can check on b4. Uh, I can 
take on c2 as well that's important yeah taking on c2 is probably just good with similar ideas as before i'm hitting the queen and if queen e3 knight d5 is even stronger because then my bishop is opened up against a1 so this is looking good if, if we get on that line sam copeland thanks for the subscription sam Plays bishop b3. He also could have checked on b5. But bishop b3. Okay, so here I was saying I'm just going to castle. Which I think remains true. I don't really want to speculate on this. Bishop here, queen takes b7. So then I don't really have time to take because he's taking here with check. So I think castling is most appropriate here. And that really takes the teeth out of any knight b5 ideas. Anything else to consider here? No, nah, I don't think so. I'm just going to castle. So I'm up two pawns now. My king is safe for the moment. Matt A, thanks for the $3. I'm going to read your message a little later, Matt A, after this game. That's a long one, and I know you like to give detailed messages. <laughs> but we're kind of in crunch time in this game, so I need to focus. Simon is drinking. I'm getting some reports. <laughs> okay, castles. So bishop g4, he's going to play queen g3, I guess. And then I'd like to play um, knight h5, but he can take on g4 then. Maybe I don't mind that, though. So I'm looking at c6 here, looking at bishop g4 still. Bishop g4, queen g3, knight h5, queen takes g4. Queen takes f4, let's say. Queen d7 looks a little annoying. Queen d6, rook d1. I think I like just c6 here. Yeah, let's do that. That's helpful in a lot of cases. Block the queen, stop knight b5. Just helpful to control these squares. Yeah, c7 was hanging. He could have tried to take c7 last move, but understandably he doesn't want to lose time, further time with this king in the center. Okay, plays the rook over. So now bishop g4 in the future will come with tempo on his queen. Don't think I want to play it yet, though, because that loses a piece. So it's between queen b6 and queen b4 here. Kind of like queen b4. Despite the fact he can play a3, I can play queen a5. Yeah, let's do that. So I think the big remaining question mark is, if there is one, is can I get this bishop out? Can I keep my um, couple of pawns? Two question marks, maybe. Because I could see him targeting e7. This bishop, I guess it has good squares now. Again, bishop g4 is a threat. f5 looks pretty stable. But I think he's going to try to pivot towards attacking this pawn. Maybe trying to force me to play e6 and lock the bishop in. Uh, e6 might also be bad on account of bishop d6. I predict he'll go a3 here. a3, queen a5, and then maybe queen e3. To attack the pawn and sidestep the bishop g4 business. Oh, I also could have thought about queen c5 on the last move. I don't know why I didn't consider that. That might have been even better. 
Maybe I do it after a3, even though that looks kind of silly. Because c5 helps control the e3 square, if I'm worried about that. On queen b6, I didn't like knight a4, gaining some time against the queen. Both under five minutes here, only on move 14. There is the 10 second increment, but you know, I want to try to stay ahead on the clock, or at least even with him. He thinks he is lost. <laughs> yeah, objectively, it looks bad for white. Doesn't seem like he has enough compensation, but... Still a little messy. Just trying to figure out what I'm going to do against a3. I am leaning towards queen c5, which is an admission that queen b4 wasn't so great because I gave him a3 for free, but I don't think it matters too much. You show mot 1, cheered 500 bits. Here are the bits your bot told me to buy. <laughs> okay, he plays queen e3 right away. Probably, yeah, that's also decent. And I can play knight h5 here. Or even maybe a developing move. But not a bad decision on his part. Maybe knight h5. Just ask that queen where it wants to go. Or knight g4, I mean. Did I say knight h5? I meant knight g4. Knight g4, queen g3. Say bishop f5 then. Can try to chase my queen around a little bit. I think that's okay though. Let's do it. Three minutes. Mm -hmm. It's also e5 here, but I'm gonna hold off on that move. In favor of developing. Predicting a3 here. a3, queen b6. If he attacks my queen here, here. I have squares to go to, although knight a4 is still annoying, isn't it? Maybe I should go to a5 then. a3, queen a5, bishop c7, queen a6 might be the better way to do this. Place knight a4 right away. Hmm. Yeah, so it looks like he's trying to trap my queen somehow. But I don't think it should work. <clears throat> Thinking about bringing this back. Bring it back, a3, queen a5. How about bishop d2? Is that troubling? No, I can always go to b5. Okay, Let's swing this back. Now I'm threatening this. So I bet he's going to attack my queen. If he attacks it this way, though, I can probably come here. Maybe queen c7 is annoying, though. But then I might get some play against his king. 
And I am up two pawns, so I can afford to give one back if I absolutely have to. Play c3. Okay. Bishop c7. I can play b6 now. Weird looking spot for the queen, but how does he attack it further? It's tough. Hmm. I think I'll just defend here. He has rook e5, but I can escape this way. Rook takes f5 take. I don't think I run into any problems here. Well, I shouldn't say any problems, but it doesn't look like it's enough for him. There's also knight h5 here. Maybe that's the best way to play it. Knight h5. Just a boring simplification. <laughs> up two pawns. He takes on a5, I take on g3. Yeah, I like it. And there's knight e4. Let's go knight h5, though. Counterattack. Minute 34 to two minutes. So he's playing forcefully, but now it's crunch time. If he doesn't have something good here, uh, it's going to be probably just winning for black because of the extra material. And I might be coming out of this with even more material. You know, it almost seems like he has to sack the exchange here. Unless he finds something with this, this, and then a rook move. He's going to take, okay. Is he going to take this and then give up the rook? Plays rook a6. Hmm. So the knight is on pre. Check doesn't really do much, I don't think. So my knight gets trapped, so let's just go here. Huh. <laughs> I'm also noticing I have this. So if knight f6, g4, I can actually play that, can't I? Yeah, let's do that. I mean, I could try it right away, too, but I want to see if he uh, what he does here. Because actually, this rook is a big liability now that I think about it. I think he's noticing it now, too, because he's looking at g4, and my bishop doesn't have a lot of squares to go to, but it has the very nice c8 square. <laughs> yeah, what to do, though, because he can't move his knight out of the way to bring this back. He can only sack, but, you know, that shouldn't work. I think I have the luxury to play knight f6. And he does sack. Okay. Yeah, and he resigned. All right, so we weathered the storm there. I think queen f3 was a mistake. I was much more worried about simply knight f3, maybe even rook takes h5, but especially knight f3. 
just development and try to proceed down a single pawn with ideas of jumping here, here, and attacking f7, later trying to set up a sacrifice. So we win that game. I'm going to run to the bathroom real quick, guys. This coffee is already running through me. I'll be right back. Game two coming up, guys. Let's do this. Let me update the scoreboard. Scoreboard. Okay, so we get that first win. Let's rematch. I'm going to open with knight f3. I said I was going to read Matt A's message. He donated $3. He says, John, I'm a zoologist studying chimp sociology in Tanzania. My chimps and I love watching your videos. My chimps have all improved by several hundred rating points since we found your rating ladder vids. Chimps love the Scandi for some reason. Cheers. <laughs> wow. You're a regular Jane Goodall there. Well, that's good to hear, Matt A. Eh? Thank you so much. Uh, let's play G3. Simon's playing his usual Dutch. And I had a feeling he would go for the Dutch, I don't know, knight f3 is an option against it. You keep some options open, so maybe I can keep my d-pawn back a little bit. Belgian novice cheered 100 bits, says cheers on the first win. And Attic C cheered 1 bit. Thank you, guys. Plays d6, so now is usually, yeah, I think I'll commit to d4 now, since e5 could be coming otherwise. Uh, he plays e6. Mm -hmm. Let's cackle. And G6. Yeah, this so-called Christmas tree formation. Yep, Simon likes this a lot. <laughs> Thanks again, Attic C, 21 bits. So I know in one of our matches, I tried to Fianchetto on the queen side against this, and I don't think it worked out very well. I think I'm going to try a different plan this time. Let's see, let's see what he does against this. I'm going to go here and now rook e1, and I'm going to play directly for e4. Try to cut the Gordian knot. Because when I've tried to maneuver against this setup, it hasn't worked out too well. And he ends up getting an initiative on the king side. But I feel like if I can break with e4 quickly in this line, then the position may not be to his liking, or as much as normal. I actually wouldn't be surprised, therefore, if he plays d5 to stop me from playing e4. But then the position takes on more of a stonewall character, with his bishop somewhat oddly placed on g7. Although, admittedly, I've played some moves, especially rook e1, that could be suboptimal in that setup. But I am very curious how he's going to react to this. Sometimes, let's say he castles here. Castles e4. Sometimes Dutch players will play f4. Again, that's a move Simon has tried against me, but he looks underdeveloped to do that. Maybe e5. Try to counteract in the center. John, it's too dark in your house. 
Yeah. My house only has windows on one side. It's a townhome. So I only get windows or light from one direction, natural light. So it looks pretty dark sometimes. <laughs> Simon is smoking now on stream. Okay. <laughs> Already after the first game, huh? Okay, he plays knight e4. I don't know why I didn't even mention that move. That is possible to stop e4 altogether. Okay, so a couple options here. I can take this, of course. Take, take, knight g5. I can play c4 with an eye towards playing queen c2. Attacking this knight in a different way. I think those are my main options. So if I take knight g5, he'll play d5. I suspect. And then if f3, if I try to just bust the, the center open, f3, let's say h6, knight h3, he can maybe try for some knight c6 business. I don't know. c4 looks a little slow. So of these two options, I prefer the direct capture. Take, take, knight g5, d5, f3. That somehow looks better. Knight c6, c3. Don't think, don't think e5 business should trouble me. Let's do this. So I'm going to go for this. Fritz man sheer two bits says I don't understand that bit thing but I give you all bits keep up your work keep your work up thank you and attic C cheered a thousand bits says oh wait I found some few <laughs> thanks attic C for gifting me those bits yeah f3 because I got to break open the center I mean this is really the only way to justify this whole rookie one and capturing on e4 approach. And he's underdeveloped. He only has his bishop out. He's not castled yet, so I think this is fully appropriate. If he takes, I'm going to take with a pawn and try to attack e6. Thanks, Naughty Ash, for the five bits. Oslo says, isn't e5 a really important move in the Dutch? The Ginger GM DVD on the Dutch claim this. Yeah, e5 is the one pawn break that Black would really like to achieve in this opening. Hey, Arrow Polis. Any interesting updates on the U.S. championship, by the way? Any unexpected results? Wow, c5. That was an unexpected move. c5. All right, so once again, Simon is offering material. What happens if I just take it? <laughs> the first question that comes to mind, what if you just take the material? Could also take here, which honestly might be good. Because if he takes with the bishop, at first I thought I would have to move my king or something, but I'm seeing now I can play e3, maybe. My knight's undefended on g5 then, though. I mean, even king h1, though, shouldn't be that bad. Hmm. But, okay, let's look at the capture on c5. That was my first instinct. Generally, I like to analyze my first instinct, especially if it's a forcing move like a capture. I mean, maybe he's just trying to create some confusion in the center, wreck the structures. But also very tempting just to take here. Take, he takes. If e3, bishop f6, I suppose. 
Knight retreats. Maybe to h3 is better. Hmm. <clears throat> I honestly kind of like that line. Take on e4. He takes with check. e3. Make him move his bishop again. Not worried about queen takes g5. I take his dark square bishop then. So he'll probably move his bishop to f6. Maybe g7, but probably f6. Knight h3. And then d5 is under attack. If d4... I can take, yeah, I should just get a big lead in development out of that, that whole sequence. I'm going to do it. I have pushed the forget about it pawn and weakened my king slightly as a result, especially down this diagonal. But he has also pushed his forget about it pawn on the very first move. And again, he only has one piece out. Everything else being equal, this should favor me with the superior development. He takes on d4. Okay. So I take on d5 probably. Threatening this, so I think he's going to take back. But isn't that a pretty ugly structure for black? He's got two double isolated pawns in the center of the board. I'm not down any material. It's equal. I can break with the e-pawn as well. I can play e4, for instance. E4, if he castles, just take on D5. Yeah, that should be good for me. Maybe he could, he's going to play E5 here. But if E5, I can plant this knight on E6. So he does take. E4, fully in spirit with the position. E4, almost a move you play automatically here. So I don't think I'm going to take too long on this move. Yeah. I don't think it makes sense to really stop him from castling. Rook f1 is probably not a bad move, but no, this must be the move. I'm not playing e3 because I want to keep my bishop in contact with the knight. Don't want to allow queen takes g5. If he takes on Passan, I can take with a rook check. He has to move his king. That's awful. If he takes, I can take with a rook check. So I think he has to castle here and give me the d5 pawn, which is not what you want if you're black in this position. Leo says, Simon is really funny to watch. I agree. <laughs> Simon is hilarious. Also, what I got to say about Simon, because I've met him a couple times in person when I've been in England, he is a great, genuine dude, like really kind-hearted dude. Every time I've talked to him in person, um, you know, he, he sometimes comes off as brash on his streams, but he's, you can just tell talking to him, he's a genuine, really kind-hearted guy. And I appreciate that about him. Z Fox says, Simon was really afraid you would play e4. All right, well, I played the move that he's afraid of. It's good to do that in chess. Attic C, two bits. Sorry, I can't stand random numbers. They bug me. Just ignore this. <laughs> As you wish, Attic C. Yeah, this opening has not gone the way he wanted. I think he has to castle and just play the position a pawn down, but it's it's a really bad pawn to lose, too. Because d5 kind of isolates his d4 pawn, but I think most importantly, the e6 square is such a weakness then. So castles, pawn takes, and I can just drop this knight in whenever I like. Hard for him to develop. Yeah, like he can't play knight d7 because this is a fork. He, then he can't take it with the bishop. I mean, you hate to play h6 here. If you're black too, it weakens your king side even further. One tactic I should keep in mind. Let's say knight e6 does get played. Oh, he just resigned. Well, it's a little surprising. I was hoping, hoping the game would go further. But I was going to say like one tactic. Let's just say he does play h6. And I jump in, and this happens, threatening e7. Looks like he can develop and try to guard this and maybe blockade, but I can actually just take here and then push and win a full rook. 
Yeah, so I think the position started backfiring on him when he played c5. It may not be that bad here after f3. There's still ways he can play this, I think. Most importantly, he's got to get castled sometime soon. But c5 was perhaps a bit too much. Maybe after takes, he should take with the bishop check. And again, I was thinking e3 or king h1. I don't know, e3. Not worried about this because, yeah, he's way behind the development. His queen's under attack. So I think a, a critical line is something like e3, bishop g7. Now this knight is under attack. Let's say I retreat it here. There's tension on this square. Maybe d4, I was thinking. This looks like a better try. My pieces are on worse squares com compared to the game. E files all blocked up. Okay, so we win that one. Yeah, I mean, I can't fully blame him for resigning, but you just hate to see a, a quick win like that, or a quick loss, I should say, especially in a dual commentary. I think we'll have this opening again, especially in the blitz portion. And I avoided losing rating points in the rapid portion. That's a success. Uh, Henry cheered 100 bits. <laughs> 100 bits worth of water for Elohim. Yeah, I gotta get Elohim here. Elohim has to cheer, cheer us on in this match. He looks a, a little more spry after I gave him a drink on one of the streams recently. So I think Elohim can credit you guys, the Twitch chat, for saving his life. Even though he is a cactus, so he should be able to survive many months without water. But I'm not kidding you guys. I think I went almost six months without giving this guy a drink. I was a very abusive plant father. I regret it. It was a dark time in my life. It's never going to happen again. Belgian novice cheered 100 bits. Says locked in the rapid portion of the match with two wins. Congrats, John. Thanks, Belgian. Uh, Tom Walker, hello to you, Tom. Cheered 500 bits. Says, jumped in just to donate a Starbucks, bro. Watch you later. Thank you, Tom. Longtime viewer of the channel. All right, I'm going to challenge Simon as we get into the blitz portion now. Five minute. Five minute coming up. Two games at each time control. And by the way, you can see the running score down here. Playing d4. Let's go g6 again. Is he going to repeat h4, I wonder? Not this time. Okay. <laughs> well, h4 was coming, just not as early as I thought. <laughs> Fair enough. Hmm. <laughs> the usual dilemma, do you allow h5 or not? I don't know. Let's allow it. Let's do it if he wants to do it. F3. Hmm. Okay. Bit of a change of plans. Okay. Hmm. Okay. I'm going to go here. I'm going to try for a plan like this. C6 and B5. See how he reacts. Okay, kick that knight away. Wouldn't be surprised to see bishop h6. Doesn't play it. At least not yet. Okay, let's develop this. No increment, remember. That is important. Now I kind of don't want a castle. Maybe I'll just develop. Yeah, I'm just going to develop. h6, bishop f8 looks weird, but then that side of the board is closed off to him. <laughs> okay. c5 I can go, or d5 I can play c5. Or maybe I want to go queen b7, keep some tension. 
Nah, C5 seems appropriate. Weird position already. A lot of pawn chain action going on here. I mean, h6 makes a lot of sense, because I don't think he wants my bishop operating on this diagonal for too long towards his king. So I wouldn't be surprised, but it closes the position for him. So, you know, don't know if he's thrilled to do that. Okay, we'll go over here. Now I can bring the knight in and try to be annoying. But knight here, he'll probably just play b3. Hmm, let's do this. I don't really fear bishop takes d7. Thank you guys for the bits and donation. I'll read that after the game. F4. He's coming at me this game. Understandably so. Let's do this. Just to stop this knight from coming out so I can take this guy. I don't know how I'm going to get this bishop into the game, by the way. It could take a while to do that. But now I have this available, too. Hmm. King over. Interesting. Okay, so let's go do this. I think he'll probably play b3, even though that does weaken his king a little bit. Yeah, this is real interesting. Not sure what to think about this position. Queen d3. Hmm. Surprised by that. I can play queen a5. Go get his dark square bishop. Yeah. Make him go back. really want my dark square bishop on this diagonal. This one, but I'm not going to get it there. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to take. I'm not sure what to do there. Fully admit this may not be best. Okay. I'm trying to get this dark square bishop in play, but I only have a minute left. Yeah, I don't like how I played this. Probably taking was good for him. Mm -hmm. Develops. Let's castle this way. <laughs> Weird decision to castle this way, but I wasn't liking the king side. Okay. Still some open lines to work with. 
take that guy. Got to play fast, John. Time to play fast. Dark square bishop is still a big problem. I'm trying to activate it. Okay. Confusion. See what happens here. Okay, I'm winning his rook. Uh, but yeah, he's getting my my bishop, I suppose. I think I'm gonna lose this one, unfortunately. Yeah. Ooh, that got sharp at the end, but I had no time left. I'm not even sure rookie three was good because you saw what happened. He got his queen on h8. Was hoping I could do something on the, the long diagonal, but I had this persistent issue of not being able to get my bishop there. So that was a problem. Okay, so Simon takes that game. The first five plus zero game. He stayed ahead on the clock there. I think he missed that I can play queen a5 way back when, but it actually didn't really do too much for me. Queen a5, queen d2, knight c4. Yeah, I won his dark square bishop, but the position is not very open. So I wasn't able to generate a whole lot. Okay, next game. <laughs> He's so proud of himself, he says, or the chat says. That was a good game on his part. I'm going to repeat this same line. He is playing it a little bit differently. He didn't play g6 this time. Yeah, he's going to go for a stonewall setup. Instead, let's jump this knight in. Mm-hmm, bishop d7. Okay. Well, let's see how he reacts to this. Got to try to break the stone wall now. That's right. Pivot this back. Hmm. I'll go here. This does give up the e4 square, but I think it's decent. Attack those weaknesses. Okay. It's letting me come forward. <laughs> it's playing a little chicken with my bishop. Or my knights, rather. Okay. I'm going to try to go here. Puts a stop to that. And now, again, I might be in a position where I can play e4. Ooh, did he just hang this? I think he did. Let's take it. And if he takes here, I can take with a pawn, in fact. I think he's losing a piece. I think he just missed that g5 was hanging. Also, bishop h6 is a threat. 3D Dave, thanks for the subscription. Mm, do I break through? 
I think yes. Let's strike. Knight d5, really? Well, there's lots of good moves here. Let's take. And then do this one. Hmm. So up a couple pawns, keeping the e-pawn defended. Play knight f4. Yeah, this should be a losing position for black. No question. But it's blitz, and anything can happen in blitz. I want to try to set up this. I'm thinking about this sneaky move, queen d2. Uh, maybe I had a chance to do it by taking, and then queen c1, looking for knight takes g6. Could have tried it. Uh, knight e5 looks good. Connecting everything with d5 also looks good. Let's just play queen d2, though. I like this move a lot. Now I think I win a piece. Because if he blocks with the h7, queen h7 in this combination, I trade and e7 forks at the end. So yeah, he has to give that up. Yeah, and he resigned. Yeah, so I don't know if he missed that I can play knight f4 against bishop h5. This maneuver, bishop d7, e8, h5 is common, but yeah, when you have to waste that much time going all the way back to e8 with the bishop, it can't be good. And then he outright dropped the g5 pawn. Okay, I got to get caught up on a couple of these donations. Five sixty-eight ML cheered five hundred bits. Says whoop whoop go John. Thank you. Attic C donated two dollars. Says actually, although similar in appearance to cacti, aloe vera is not a cacti, but a succulent. Ah, that's right. Thank you for that correction. It's a succulent and a member of the lily family. Aloe plants are more closely related to tulips and asparagus than cacti. The more you know. Spartan Philosopher cheered 100 bits. Ever thought of using or have used the Barnes opening 1F3 to taunt or confuse your opponent? Nope, never thought about that one. <laughs> Fabraro cheered 1,000 bits, says Go John. Thank you, Fabraro. BL Swagger resubscribed. Thanks, BL Swagger. Avalanche321 cheered 5 bits. Please win the match for Ben Feingold. Is Ben watching or something? Fizzy Pish donated $5, says, I hate it when mommy and daddy fight. <laughs> 3D Dave cheered five bits. Belgian Novice cheered 200 bits. You guys are spoiling me today. Have to go now, but keep up the pressure, John. Thanks, Belgian Novice. Thanks for tuning in. And BL Swagger with another five bits. Says, go, John. Thank you so much, guys. Okay, so the 5-5 five -five portion was tied 1-1. One -one. We are on to the three-minute now. Let me match Simon. Three minute. This is the time control I have the most problems with. You guys watch my stream, you know this. I struggle in three minute. Just gotta move fast. Icelandic Gambit says, John and Simon were the first two chess channels I regularly watched on YouTube. Well, it's good to know. Yeah, I think Simon's been posting videos for probably about as long as I have. And I started my channel back in 2014. So it's been a few years now. 
Neil the Seal says, just treat it like bullet. Yeah, I think that's very good advice. Play these three-minute games more like a bullet game than a blitz game. 100%, I agree. I've tried to train for that in the past just for whatever reason. Probably because I talk too much <laughs> and I think too much. I'm too much of a perfectionist. For whatever reason, I just always get in time pressure in three-minute, no matter who I'm playing. Have I ever drank an aloe drink? Yeah, they're pretty good. I mean, I don't really consume a lot of sugar, so I stay away from sugary drinks, but aloe is good. Um, he declined my challenge. Hmm. Well, I'll challenge him again. Whoops. Hopefully he's not rage quitting. I think that was just a misclick, guys. <laughs> All right, so I'm maintaining the two-game lead. Let's go back to G6 again. I mean, I haven't minded the positions I get out of this. I think it's been largely okay. I'll take the opportunity to play D5 if I can. Ah, this sort of setup. Yeah, yeah, okay. Bishop F5. Let's see what happens here. Hmm. Let's go C6. Again, play fast, John. Don't slow down under any circumstances. <laughs> Keep up the tempo. He's going for G4. Hmm. Okay, let's pull this back. He's going for one of these two breaks, I bet. Maybe not yet, okay. Try to work into some of these squares. He's throwing Airy and Harry at me. G4 coming? Nope. Okay. No G4 yet. Well, I went in exchange here. Also, I can try to pick up D4. Oh, he took with a queen. That's smart. So now I'm thinking this. Hmm. Okay, bring this over. Don't think he wants to open up the C file much. That looks troubling for him. G3. Hmm. All right, let's take. Now on knight a3, I have queen here. Attacking both of these guys. Double attack on the loose points. And if he trades queens, that should just be over. Yeah, so he resigned. Yeah, I think castling when you've made that many pawn weaknesses... I mean, okay, he just straight blundered knight e3, but it was looking a little shaky here based on all the pawns that he's pushed already. There's lots of weaknesses that are left in the wake. The knight coming into c4, this needs protection. If ever I play e6, it's hitting the queen. He might have to play g3. Looks a little shaky. I hate that this keeps turning red. I keep having to change it manually. My wonderful WordPad scoreboard. All right, rematch coming. We're going to have more of the same. Because I've been liking the positions I'm getting with white, so I don't see a reason to deviate. This plan of trying to go e4 as quickly as possible is just very interesting. I think Dutch players don't like this. Okay, this is a bit of a, a change. 
So he's castled this time. Okay, let's do this one. I'm going to go queen c2. I mentioned this as a possibility in that second standard game. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's stabilize the center. C5. Take. Hmm. All right. I think he's just going to play it like a pure gambit. Probably knight c6 now. Yep. Let's play a3. That looks helpful. Guard against knight b4. I'm going to do this and try to get this knight in here. Yeah, he could play queen e7 and try to regain his material, though. May not be that bad for him. Or rook a5. Rook a5 is creative. He's going g5. Okay. Let's develop. If he goes g4, I'm going to take and then play knight d4. This is always the tone in our games. <laughs> Simon sacking, me taking the material. <laughs> always. Okay, I'm going to try to tie him down to that weakness. C6. He might just sacrifice it. But maybe I can make him play a kind of a slow move. Also, now I can try to play for F3 and kick that knight out of there. That knight needs to go. It's too strong. The kitchen sink variation. That's right, Neil. Plays bishop back. Okay. So bishop b4, maybe? Now I'm going to go f3. I don't want to lose time. I could take on d2 and then take c5. All right, he's going to do this one. Do, 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 do. All right, let's go here. Expecting knight b3. But I went a pawn. Also, I think it's a little tough for him to get these pawns in motion. As if c5 I could take on d5 would check. Just take like this. Hmm. Looking for e4 ideas. Also sidestep rook b8. Hmm. This has got to be good. Yeah, he's trying to keep the position closed, but it must, must be good. Pieces are coming into the action. Okay, let's take. I'm up a couple pawns now. Hard for him to get his king safe, too, I think. Now he's pinned up. Can't move this. Probably play rook d7. Then I have bishop h3, maybe. Rook f5 is the idea.
yeah, that's just losing. Okay, and I win. I was able to take the play over to the queen side and in the center by playing this way. I think after f3, he should have played knight takes d2. Knight takes d2, queen takes d2, bishop takes c5. Could play rook c1 then. Somehow keeping the dark square bishop is going to give him better play though, I think. So thus concludes the 3-0 portion. And I think with that, I officially win the match. We've got two games of bullet coming up. Uh, I missed some donation and cheers. Micmac40 donated $10. Thank you, Micmac. Appreciate that a lot. We've got 561 viewers. Awesome. Hope you guys are all having a good day. Final time control. One minute coming up. Two games, a bullet. Hey, Axiom Fox. Thanks, Henry. 100 bits. Hello, Chess Nerdbird. Simon's playing music now, huh? Thanks, Nico. I was asking earlier about the U.S. Championship, but I think I missed any of the updates you guys were posting. Anything interesting happen? Any upsets yet? People in tough positions? All right, two games of bullet. Oh, we got to go Scandi. I haven't played it yet. Team Scandi. There will be a Team Scandi emoticon coming, by the way, guys. It's in the works. I'm just going to play in the center here, but I'm not going to let that pawn get all the way to h6. Uh, let's do this. I'm going to sack that pawn. Hmm. Let's go here. Try to attack this guy. Create some trouble. Hmm. Uh, I'm not going to take it. I'm just going to try to castle. He's going to take g7 then. Which is going to create some confusion. So I think better not to take it for now. He's playing faster than I am though. So it would be nice to pick up the pace, John. Ooh, here he comes. Hmm. Okay, take that. Let's bring this guy in. Take the material. And try not to lose on time. Yeah, King's coming up. Okay. So in that one, he pushed h4, but yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's no point in analyzing a bullet game. It's just a bullet game, right? I think the interesting decision in this one was whether to take the bishop or not. You know, certainly in a longer time control game, I would have seriously thought about that. But I just quickly looked at this line, and then my rook has to move, and I lose this. King safety is so paramount in bullet. Even though he's down a piece here, the h-pawn's dangerous. My king is probably going to be stuck in the center. Rook e1 is coming. Yeah, it looks dangerous. So that's why I opted for bishop e6. So that if he, if he takes here, I was just going to castle. My rooks are connected. This pawn's defended. The bishop is still hanging. This looks good for me. Okay, so this is... Apologies for the red type there, but all right. Might as well stick with this opening. 
He's not playing the Dutch this time. He's going with like a flank setup. Hippopotamus? Guess so. H6 probably, yep. Hmm, let's play D5. Let's see what happens here. F3, break this. Break it open. Now I'm trying to win a pawn on the king side. Looks good. Let's take it. Yeah, that's a piece. Okay. So, thus concludes the match. Obviously not Simon's best. I'm sure he will be the first one to admit. Uh, that's clear to me. He's way stronger than that score indicates. Yeah, again. Not really any point in talking about a bullet game. But I think this was a nice move, bishop g5. After bishop g5, it's very hard for black to keep the structure together. There's too much tension. And because the knight is pinned, yeah, he he's in bad shape here, I think. Bishop is also out of the game. Usually in a king's you need to be here. Maybe that could assist in defending the structure, but there it just wasn't going to happen. So, thanks to Simon for the match. It was good to play him again. And yeah, lopsided score, not Simon's best. He is far stronger than that, have no doubt. Our feed air ratings are roughly the same. Simon's a GM, I'm an IM. Simon has been as high as, I think, 25, 60 or so feed air, maybe higher even. So definitely don't judge him on the basis of this one match. That match was actually shorter than I thought. What time did we start? We started like an hour and a half ago. I guess that makes sense. Because the 15 plus 10 games, one of them was really short. And the other games go pretty fast. There's no increment in any of those time controls. Simon wants more five minute. <laughs> yeah, we could play a little five minute. Tell him I'm going to run to the bathroom real quick again. And I'll be right back. We'll play a little longer. All right, guys. So what time control was he saying? Someone said 5 plus 5. Is that right? Oh, Shanklin on the verge of winning, really. Let's check that briefly. He's playing Naka, right? Oh, wow. Look at Naka's pieces. They're all in the back rank, practically. King in the firing line. Hmm. Just at a glance, this looks really nice for black, yeah. Shanklin's got a time edge, too. 
Naka's been struggling with the clock. You saw him flag yesterday against Viadi Zoria, admittedly in a losing position, but... Huh. Five minutes until he loses one game. Five plus five. All right, I'll challenge him five plus five. Okay, challenge sent off. <laughs> All right, here we go. So increment this time can adjust a little bit. Still want to stay relatively close on the clock. All right, I'll play G6 again. Be getting some weird positions out of this. But mainly I want more practice in this opening because I've been playing it a ton lately. Hey, Sober Horse. Yeah, Sober Horse, the match is officially over. We're just playing some games for fun now. Bishop C4. How do I play this again? I'm going to try this. This is a line. I don't really remember how it goes, but it is a line. Because now I'm going to regain the pawn on d5 next move. And again, that queen making an appearance on f3. <laughs> ASAP. Okay. I wonder if he'll go queenside again. It would not shock me. Just continue developing. Nope, he goes kingside. Okay. This looks kind of annoying, because I'm threatening to take and then take here. So I think he has to play bishop e3. Yep. And now maybe e5. e5 could be irritating. e5 threatening e4. If he takes, I take with the knight. Yeah, that's trouble for him. And if he attacks my bishop with this, I can just play e4. And because his queen can't go anywhere on this diagonal to keep this defended, he might be in difficulties. Sure thing, Chess Bay. That'd be great. Okay, so I can win a pawn here. It's not the greatest pawn, though. It's doubled, it'll be isolated. I think I like e4 best. I still might be able to win d4 later. So this queen has to go to an awkward square. Yeah, like that. Now knight h5, queen moves. Take on e2, then take on d4. Okay. Hmm. Some sharp stuff to consider, though. I kind of like taking an f5. I'm going to take the start for sure. I don't think I want to take this pawn, actually, though. Kind of like f5 here. if I take on d4, I think the rook's going to appear on d1, and I'll have problems with d5. But this, on the other hand, looks very interesting. I'm just looking for that. This is a weak piece. Plays g4.
Hmm. Some interesting possibilities here, too. Okay, I'm going to take... And after takes, like, this almost works. Take, knight takes, but he has rook e3. So not quite. Feels like there should be something good here. I'm not seeing it, though. I'm just going to go back. My biggest weakness is d5, with this bishop pointed directly at it. I mean, I'm considering even going after this bishop in some cases. But his knight is coming in, these two minor pieces are going to give me a few headaches. Hey, Berlin calling me. Yeah, like if queen d7, knight c5 is coming. I don't know. This position suddenly isn't that great for me. It's also not terrible, but... Don't like it as much. Okay, I'm going to do this. Didn't want him to set up anything with bishop g5. And there he goes, <laughs> just as I say that. But that does leave this week. I can't really go after the exchange, though, or the, the pawn right away. So bishop f6. It'd be nice to take, but again, I don't think it works. Bishop f6, he just trades, and then I have less firepower against d4. Okay, I'm going to go here. Oh, that I missed completely. That's a nice shot. But is it good? I don't know. I think I kind of have to go for this now. I completely missed that he can play rook takes e4. But I do have this threat, and also this threat now. Okay, check. I have to play this. Okay. Takes here though, and then takes on a8. Hmm. I'm gonna take this one and then take on f2. Somehow, even material after all that, and I'm looking for bishop e5 now. This rook is kind of glued to the back rank because of this threat. Hmm. Let's attack that bishop.
can play bishop here now, though. Plays knight g5. Okay, I gotta move faster. I've got a minute left. <laughs> if check, king f6 takes on h7, king e6, and he's got a couple pieces hanging. Ah, but he can never play that move. That's checkmate. Yeah, he just forgot that his rook was needed on the back rank. Mm, that was complicated, though. I felt like I wasn't really getting much with this f5 plan. I mean, taking on d4 would be the natural continuation here, but again, I didn't like all this happening with the rook making an appearance here. If the bishop moves, I lose d5. If queen f6, he takes d5 this way. Thought maybe I have some, or maybe I have some knight f4 ideas. I'm not quite sure. Yeah, at the very end, I suspect it's actually pretty balanced after all this happens. I could play rook takes a8 here, but I didn't like all the pawns he was getting. Rook takes b4. Felt better, especially with my time disadvantage, to do this and try to play for the initiative. But I'm not mating here, him here. His, his bishop just controls the f3 square, so rook h2 is not leading to anything. Thanks, Swing. Glad you're watching as well. John, you broke his soul. <laughs> I hope not. I think Simon will recover. I don't know if he wants to play anymore. Someone said he wanted to just play play till he loses. Let's take a look at that Shanklin game again. I'm just very curious what's going to happen here. So a couple moves were played. B4, Queen G6, Rook F1, C6. Hmm. Yeah, still looks like heavy pressure for black. I mean, how can white ever be doing well here with the knight stuck on the back rank like this? And the time pressure is going to be real because this is move 27. I know you guys can't see the move list, but this is move 27. Naka has 14 minutes. Yeah, I think we'll wrap up the match here. Bosch Destroyer, I will play fans, the spectators. I've done a couple streams in the past, I don't know, a few weeks where I've done that. So I'm going to make that uh, a semi-regular thing. Let's just check out a couple more games here. Wesley So, Fabiano. This game hasn't changed a whole lot since I first looked at it at the outset of the match. Just level end game. Hard to see this ending in anything other than a draw. Uh, what about Sabina versus Nazi? Ooh, okay. Sharp position here. Sabina way down on time. This is the one I was saying. Sabina went into that sharp variation, but was burning a ton of time in the opening. I mean, this is obviously dangerous for her. Black's bishop's pointing against this exposed white king. Black's king looking very comfy in the center. Yeah, I think Nazi's going to figure this out and win. So what about the Annie Wang game then? Since she was a full point ahead. But I think Annie Wang has some tough pairings now. She's playing Irina Crush this game. They're still in the middle game. Looks like a Rui Lopez. No, it was actually a D4 opening. It was a Nimzo. Hmm. Okay. So big opportunity for Nazi. And Shanklin, too. I mean, if Shanklin wins again with black, that'll make three victories he's had with the black pieces. Against some incredibly strong opponents, too. I didn't realize initially that the U.S. Championship is 11 rounds. I thought it was the customary 9. Well, you know, most big tournaments are 9 rounds. But I think in the past it's also been 10 or 11 rounds, so it makes sense. Thanks, Adnan Chess. Thanks, Apodictic. Yeah, appreciate everyone tuning in. 
the 583 plus viewers. You know, lopsided match, but again, you know, Simon's much better than that. He'll be back. You can't break Simon's spirit for too long. So, thanks, Chess Bay. I'm going to log off, guys. I'll do another stream again soon. So keep an eye on uh, the Twitch stream. Also, by the way, I think YouTube, if you subscribe to me on YouTube, if you click the bell icon next to my subscription button on there, you get notifications when I post YouTube videos. I mentioned that because I noticed a lot of content creators are specifically telling their subscribers to click that bell because sometimes the notifications are weird on YouTube. If you don't click that bell, you might not get a notification when I post a video. So if you really want to see my videos as soon as they're posted, feel free to do that. And I will upload this match immediately once I end this stream. Thanks for the bits, Frank Rutten, 250 bits. So I'll see you guys again soon. Thanks for tuning out or uh, tuning in for this match. Elohim passes along his thanks as well. He's nice and hydrated. A succulent, not a cacti. So thank you to the person who clarified that. Yeah, absolutely, Chess Bay. Feel free. As I said, I want to play as many streamers as I can. Uh, streamers that would give me a good match. I definitely don't mind being the underdog, so if it's a strong GM or you know an IM or something, please pass along their info. All right, later, guys. Have a good one. Bye.